One of the most anticipated events in dirt modified racing is once again upon us. The postponed Victoria 200 at the Utica Rome Speedway has now become part of a blockbuster Memorial Day weekend double header for 2010. The half mile clay oval at Utica Rome sets the stage for race number two of the Dark Dirt Race of Champions modified series. This unique 200-lap race format will reward the victor with a cool $10,000. Our own Mike Mallett chats with one of the hottest drivers on dirt in this week's track-wide profile, Stuart Friesen. You won't want to miss this week's edition of the Track-Wide Roundup with racing action from numerous touring divisions and weekly tracks. Buckle up and get ready for the 2010 Victoria 200 on Trackwide Thunder. Welcome to Track Wide Thunder. Doug Elkins along with Chelsea Miller. We're here today at the Utica Rome Speedway for one of the biggest races around, the Victoria 200. It's hot and steamy here today on Memorial Day. Going to present a lot of challenges for these drivers, right, Chelsea? It definitely is, Doug. A lot of guys have checked into the pits today from all over. Some of them are going to have a bigger payday than others, but it's going to all depend on the way the track is going to slick up with this heat. And they're learning something about that track right now as some of the cars are out there taking hot laps, but some of the drivers are waiting a little bit. We'll check in with some of those right now. The track is really slick uh, in the afternoon here, so the guys that run here regularly uh, kind of have a little bit of an advantage. But when you guys, guys like Brett Hearn and Billy Pouch and Billy Decker and all these guys here, uh, they don't uh, lack for anything. So uh, I think it's going to be a good race here today. It's going to be a tough racetrack, you know, with the sun out and the hot temperatures and all. It's going to be a slippery track, but, uh, you know, it's going to be a great racetrack. It looks smooth. It looks, you know, fast as it's going to be. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the, you know, the race in action today. This is going to be a, a slow type of racetrack, and uh, you, you really got to stay patient and calm and not get excited, and, and it's a long race. So once again, you, you only want to race when you have to race and uh, and uh, get it done, you know, but more or less you're racing the racetrack rather than the other drivers. Well, experience does help, but we see racetracks like this all the while, so, you know, really there's no excuses. Um, you know, there's, there's some guys here that really got their, their cars rolling well and going good, and, and they're going to be tough here regardless, just... Um, hopefully the track doesn't rubber up in one groove, and hopefully we got a racetrack and made the best man win. Yeah, I think you need the car extremely tight. You got, you know, I mean, it's just ain't a walk-in deal, and you're going to pick up on it. Uh, you know, I think it takes some time here to learn this track because it's really slick, and I'm not really used to slick this slick a track. I've only been here like five times, I think, four or five times, so it's it's okay. It's slick. I just hope it doesn't lay rubber. You know what I mean? It, it looks like it's pretty close to. To doing that, I hope they do a little track prep so it doesn't latch up. If it does, make for a bad race. Today it's going to be, you know, you, you're going to have to really be careful because you can't step on the gas. That's a problem, you know. Mm -hmm. You want to go fast, and uh, you have to train yourself to not not try to get on the gas too hard too fast. And it's that simple. It's going to be a finesse deal. You know, sometimes we'll get here and the track will be black like this and real slippery, and sometimes it's hammered down. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty pretty big difference between the two of them. I think I run, I don't know, sixth or seventh in this race last year, and. Uh, we were leading the race here at the end of the year and broke, so, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, we brought a small block today. We'll just see how it goes. Coming up on Track by Thunder, we'll take a look at this week's roundup right after these messages. Track Wide Thunder on Time Warner Cable Sports is brought to you by Gates Coal Insurance, your independent insurance company locally owned and operated since 1972. Race communications for Trackwide Thunder has been provided by Racing Electronics, your number one source for professional race communications worldwide. Welcome back. It's time to take a look at the heat action that happened here today at Utica Rome Speedway. Let's send it up to the tower to Mike and Doug. Thanks, Chelsea. Doug Elkins and Mike Mallett up here on the roof of Utica Rome Speedway. Qualifying heat race action just took place for the Victoria 200. Boy, talk about some star-studded races. 
Yeah, there's a lot of big names here today at Utica Roma Speedway. A lot of guys trying to get into this show, and right now there's still not a lot of guys that are in. Yeah, there's a lot of good guys that could be running Consolation and B main races trying to get in. But while they're doing work in the pits, let's take a look at some of the action that took place in the qualifying heats. <laughs> First of six qualifying heats gets the green flag. Sean Donath, who used to race here back in the outlaw days, driving the Tony Steiner on number 13, would have the early lead, but look at Andy Bacchetti down low in the 34. Yeah, Andy Bacchetti picking up the ride in the 34 machine, but another guy picking up a ride, Tim McCready, working the high side with a four-star car. Yeah, Vinny Solano bought two cars at the Sebeckus and the other one a little bit later on. Todd Burley making his way. Of course, he runs, wins a lot of races here at Utica Rome. Yeah, Todd Burley, a weekly regular at the Speedway. Nice shot at Tim McCready up on the outside. And Tim McCready would dominate as he would go on to the win in the qualifying number one, Todd Burley gets in the show in second, and so does Andy Bacchetti with his third place finish. Qualifying heat number two, a couple of Troyers, Jimmy Phelps and Rich Scalata from New Jersey would bring them down, but look at Billy Decker here sweep the outside in the red number 91. Yeah, right now, early on, it seems like the high side, Doug, is the place to be in these qualifying events. Mitch Gibbs, you see the black and green car trying to make his way through the field. Now, that one car, normally that's Stuart freezing behind the wheel, but uh, Jeff Strunk is up from Pennsylvania. He's driving that tonight. We're a multi-time future winner down there in PA. Now we got a battle for the lead as Jimmy Phelps works to the inside, and that's Larry White coming from the back of the pack. And like you were saying, bottom was the place to be but don't tell that to Larry White. He's making his own lane on the outside. Nice move as he gets two spots there in about half a racetrack. So Larry White would go on for the big win. Billy Decker gets in the show. Jimmy Phelps in as well with the 98H Drunken Gifts. They head to the Kotze. Qualifying heat number three was next down on the racetrack, and a rookie, Jason Rude, would lead them into turn number one. Yeah, Rude works the high side and watching that last qualifying event, but it's not going to work here. Look at the doctor trying to make a three-wide move. Boy, that's a good race and down the back stretch, and you can see the 14 of Mori now with the top spot as they head into turn number three. Into the corner of the work, Jason Rude, again, that high side, thinks that's the place to be. The doctor right through the middle will take the lead. Nice move by Danny Johnson. Like I said, not many people use in the middle. Goes right back to the bottom, but Rude still in good position here. So Danny Johnson will get the win. Alan Johnson comes up the second, and Alan Barker gets in with his third place finish. Next qualifying heat on the racetrack, Pat Ward has not been enjoying the best of seasons at Utica Rome, but boy, Mike is sure certainly wouldn't know it from this heat race here. Yeah, this heat race, he'll get out in front here early on, and Captain Kirk in that 7K will try to track him down, but he is nothing for Pat Ward. Down on the bottom, you see the number 18, that's Danny Barron driving a car. It looks a lot like his dad's right now, but this one, all Pat Ward. He goes out of the win over Brad Alger and Casey Williams, so the regulars get in in heat number four. Qualifying heat number five was next, and boy, this was a loaded heat. Yeah, no doubt about it. Watch him going to turn one. The Quaker Shaker, Rick Laubach, takes the lead. One of the better nicknames in racing right there. You see Dave Rauscher up to position number two, but lots of big-name drivers in this one, including Tim Fuller. Watch him here in the 74. Yeah, Tim Fuller, he's going to pull the slider on the big show. Dave Rauscher, they come off the turn four. Well, that puts Fuller in the show in third spot, but the racing is not over just yet. For Stuart Friesen, he knows this track very well. He'll try Rick Laubach here in three and four. Yeah, he'll pull the slide job once again to grab the top spot. Of course, when you get a heat with big-name drivers, not everybody's going to get in. And Matt Shepard and Ryan Phelps, both for the Conci here, with their fourth and sixth place finishes. Stuart Friesen would go on from there to get the win, so he would get a redraw spot along with Rick, Law Rick Laubach, and in the show also is Tim Fuller. Final qualifying heat was the next one out onto the track. And early on, would be Kevin Bates and Michael Storms in the other Vinny Salerno car. That's him in the number four, taking the lead yeah. here off the start. We already saw Tim McCready in one four-star car. Now another one trying to make its way into the show. Of course, Bobby Barron has been fast here all year long. He'll go to the inside of Bates here and pick up position number two. Yeah, Bobby Barron, the current points leader at Utica Road, working that double zero. And there's a shot of Brett Hearn as he tries to get into the show. Hearn currently in fourth as Michael Storms will get the win. Bobby Barron will be second. Kevin Bates gets third. You just see Hearn in the shot there. Fourth place finish for him. That sends him to the cuts. This week's Blast from the Past takes us back to August 24th, 2000. Many of the same cars and stars that are on hand for this year's Victoria 200 can be seen here. The yellow 7X of Steve Payne grabbed the lead at the start of this 100-lap affair. The Doctor, number 27J, Danny Johnson, and Jack Johnson in the 20, along with Brett Hearn in the number 3, make it three wide for second place, heading into turn number 1. The battle for the lead would heat up with just 30 laps remaining, as Steve Payne and Danny Johnson would swap lanes battling side by side for over 10 laps. The Doctor in his potent number 27J Troyer would assume the lead on lap 79. 
the familiar orange number nine of barefoot Bob McCready tries to fend off Alan Johnson in his blue number one for the fifth spot in the closing laps. The doctor would go on to claim victory in the 100 lap affair, followed by Steve Payne, Jack Johnson, Brett Hearn, and Alan Johnson. For more videos from the 80s, 90s, and 2000 and beyond, check out thomasracingvideos.com. You and your family are invited to our house. Perhaps you have not had a recent review of your insurance. At Gates Cole, we contact our business clients months before the renewal. We offer several competitive options. Please call us so we can review and propose your business insurance and you can enjoy the benefits of switching to Gates Cole. We have protected generations of families and businesses in central New York. Switch to Gates Cole. Oswego Speedway is the short track equivalent to Indianapolis. Find out why they call it the Indy of the East. Weekly racing action kicks off each Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. Watch the Novella Super Modifieds and the Pathfinder Bank Small Block Superstars race to victory lane. Oswego Speedway is your ticket to short track racing. Call 315-342-0646 or go to OswegoSpeedway.com. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modifieds. We still encountered a little bit of rain, but we're going to bring to you what we got. Take a look. This week, we start the roundup at the Fonda Speedway. All-star circuit of champions. Four 10 sprinters and Jessica Zemkin. Of course, she loves this place. She started her career at the race, and she leads early in the number 14. But she wouldn't have the lead for long. Here comes Tyler Walker. Watch the number 17. Nice sweep move on the outside of turn number two. Tyler Walker is now your new race leader. But this race is not over yet. See the blue number 27 on the bottom? That's Darren Pittman. And how did Tyler Walker save that one down in turn number one? But the race for the front is not over yet. Watch them split the slower traffic here in turn number three slide up the racetrack together this was one of the best sprint car races anybody's ever seen at fonda as darren Pittman goes on to get the win in this one over tyler walker jessica zemkin aeronaut and fast freddie raymer and he will celebrate down in victory lane at fonda boy this guy knows how to celebrate in victory lane that's first time pro stock winner sheldon martin of course remember his dad used to run at syracuse a lot so there is nothing like a first time winner enjoy the moment young mr martin nice job and congratulations on your win. Three cars under a blanket here in the Modifieds. Jimmy Ryan, Kenny Tremont, and Joe Williams. Ryan is in the 60, Tremont the 115, and Williams. And oh, look at the contact. And look at, like I said, this is asphalt, but they're dirt tracking. What a finish as Jimmy Ryan holds off Kenny Tremont and Joe Williams to get the win at Malta. Utica Rome Speedway, Heat Race Sportsman action. See, Bobby Hackle got the right rear tire of the car in front of him, and a violent flip for Hackle. Fortunately, he was okay. So the Modifieds in the feature. Beautiful racing surface here at the Utica Rome Speedway. Pete Taylor out in front and watch the action as everybody sorts things out back behind him. Now, Taylor had not won a modified race at Utica Rome since the year 2000. He got some setup advice from Jimmy Phelps on some ride heights and got his brand new 2010 Troyer to the front of the field. Willie Decker, that's the yellow car you see chasing him here. He had a couple of opportunities on some late race restarts, but nobody would get Pete Taylor on this night as he beats Willie Decker, Ronnie Johnson, Paul Jensen, and Todd Burley. So a nice victory lane celebration for Pete Taylor. Nice job. Eldora Speedway, Rossburg, Ohio. It's dirt late model dream weekend. This one was postponed from Saturday night. Ray Cook, the 53, had the early lead, but a nice slide job here by Billy Moyer. Look how close he got that quarter panel to the wall over in turn number two. So Billy Moyer this one was all about him, and it's nice to see him running the top again at Eldora. Billy Moyer, $100,000 is what he gets for the big win at Eldora Speedway. So celebrate down in victory lane, Billy, on a well-earned victory on one of the toughest race nights anywhere, the dream at Eldora. 
Can-Am Speedway four-wide salute to the crowd here as the World of Outlaws Late Model Series visits the nasty track of the North for the second season in a row. And a guy with local knowledge did well in this one. Tim Fuller, of course, started his career in small blocks up here at the Can-Am Speedway. That was his yellow and red number 19, picking up the early lead. But Timmy McCready, he also ran this place a lot. He was making his way up through the field here, making the move down on the inside to pick up a position here. But Tim Fuller was out in front, and he had a big lead early on. Tim McCready unable to close the gap as Tim Fuller wins by nearly half a track. Win number one, by the way, for Tim Fuller on the circuit this year over Tim McCready, Daryl Lanigan, series point leader Josh Richards, and Shane Clanton. Tim Fuller taking it in from the home fans down in victory lane at Can-Am. Let's stay at the Can-Am Speedway. Couple days later on a Friday night, Small Block Modifieds headline the show here at the Can-Am Speedway, and Zach Aubertine, the 0-3, had never won a modified race at Can-Am. He would have the early lead, but Danny O'Brien was coming. That was him in the blue number seven. Made the outside move on Rob Bellinger, so he was trying to run down Zach Aubertine, but Aubertine would not be challenged on this night as he would take it off of turn number four, drive it across the line first, Zach Aubertine so congratulations go out to Zach Aubertine as he picks up his very first modified feature win at Can-Am and he gets to celebrate down in victory lane with flagger Matt Burdick and yeah that's a nice thing but it's a little bit better when you can celebrate in victory lane with Ms. Dirt Car 2010. Let's head down to Grandview Speedway in Bechtelsville, Pennsylvania for a Tuesday night show part of the Super Dirt Car Series. The Traffic Jam 100 would see the Dirt Boys out in front early. That's Dale Plank on the bottom in the 77X and right there with him Stuart Friesen in the number one as they would battle for the lead in this one. Watch Friesen get the run off the top side here in turn number four. He was very fast early in this one. But there's another guy here who does very well. Craig Von Doren had his small block under the hood and Von Doren would make the move here on Dale Plank. Look how close he came to that inside retaining wall. And Craig Von Doren would be your new race leader. Watch this out of turn number two as second and third place get together there. That would end up causing some damage to the front end of Stuart Friesen's car and he would pit later on. And uh, but not before showing his displeasure to Dale Plank for that contact over in turn number two. But when they went back to racing, this one was all Craig Von Doren as he goes on to his very first ever win on the Super Dirt Car Series over another Grandview regular, Dwayne Howard. Plank ends up third. Jimmy Phelps and Billy Decker round out the top five and $6,000 richer as Craig Von Doren as he beats off the invaders at Grandview. Orange County Fair Speedway, the big show too the very next night on Wednesday night and a real good field of cars on hand here at the much flatter hard clay surface. Trouble over here, big wreck in turn number three. Matt Shepard, Brett Hearn, they're involved in this deal. Dale Plank as well. Hearn heads to the pit area with some pretty good damage on his car. Few restarts later, Danny Johnson, Jerry Higby, they get together. Look at this carnage on the front stretch. Cars flipping all over. Man, that was one of the worst crashes I've seen in a long, long time. Tough one there as Mark Flack and Jerry Higby climb out of their car. Everybody was okay. That's the good thing on this one. But, boy, there was a lot of really good race cars that aren't so good anymore. There's carnage everywhere you look on the front stretch at Orange County Fair Speedway. Look at that, Mark Flack getting help from his car. Man, that is a wrecked up race car right there for Mark Flack. There's Jerry Higby getting out of his ride as well. So, boy, that was touch and go. Let's go back to the racing now. Jimmy Phelps and Billy Decker, they're battling for the lead. Remember, these guys did a lot of this last year, but this time out, rain would shorten the event. Jimmy Phelps would get the win over Billy Decker and Stuart Friesen. So congratulations to Jimmy Phelps as he gets a photo session with this dirt car as well. Let's head to Spencer Speedway in Williamson, New York, the Race of Champions Modified Tour on asphalt and new pavement, as a matter of fact. Last year, they redid the surface here at Spencer. Billy Putney would be your early race leader. That's him in the number 88, but Wilbur Heaving gets the lead in three. Putney ends up getting loose in turn three, collects a couple of other cars, including Kyle Ebersol and Jim Storis. Now watch this. Here we go. Chuck Hosfeld on the outside. He has been the man on this series all year long. He goes to the outside of that beautiful number 51 of Heaving. He takes the lead, and Chuck Hosfeld would go on to win his third Race of Champions Series event in a row over Heaving, Hirschman, Rusty Smith, and Earl Paulus. Same tour next night. 
Gun Tire Raceway Park in Lancaster, New York, as Western New York hosts the Race of Champions Modified Series for the second night in a row. It would be Mike Leedy who would lead the field down to the green as they sort things out. Watch this coming through the field. Here comes Chuck Hosfeld, three for three, like we said on the series, making up a spot here, getting around Wilbur Heaving. Trouble in turn number three, Bob Reese, just a little contact with Billy Putney, but it was enough to send Reese around. Now, you're only seeing part of the deal that happened in turn number three. There was a lot more folks involved in this one, including Rick Kluth, Doug Ryu, and Mike Speedy. Here's the battle for the lead. Late in the race, Matt Hirschman has the lead. He's on the high side, the number 60. But here comes that man, Chuck Hosfeld, down to the inside once again, takes the lead over in turn number two. Four for four on the series this year. Eric Rudolph ended up third. Rusty Smith, Jan Leedy, routed out the top five. When we come back, our own Mike Mallett has a conversation with driver Stuart Friesen right after this. Welcome back. It's time for this week's track-wide profile. Our own Mike Mallett catches up with Stuart Friesen as he walks us through his racing career. <laughs> Well, joined now by Stuart Friesen, one of the regulars here at the Utica Rome Speedway. Stuart, been racing a long time. Take us through your racing history. Wow, that's a, that's a long time here. Absolutely right. Um, basically started, I was a kid, you know, we started out in go-karts. Uh, moved from go-karts into three-quarter midgets on pavement uh, up at Lancaster Speedway. And uh, from there, got into a dirt sportsman car and progressed through the ranks. Ran sportsman for, I think, four or five years. And then um, got the opportunity to run, for, run some modifieds for a couple different people. And, uh, you know, it's... It's a labor of love, and here we are. Tell you what, you mentioned running the sportsman. How did, did that help your career along? Oh, tremendously. That's where I learned, you know what I mean? When I first started coming around race cars and stuff when I was a kid, I didn't even know what a, what, you know, a nut and bolt, what, which way the throw, you know what I mean, how to tighten and bolt or nothing. So, um, you know, the sportsman is just, that's where you learn everything. You learn how to maintenance the car and work on the cars and set them up and, uh, you know, try to get a routine and get consistent with stuff. And, you know, now Modifieds were, um, you know, everything you learn, it, it's just, you know, you got to get the fundamentals and you always come back to that. So uh, whatever you pick up early in your, in your career is uh, is key. Now, we know in the past you've ran, the, you know, the Modified Super Dirt Series, you did all that travel and all that. How did that help you for these weekend grinds? That helped me tremendously. I had a really good opportunity in 2004 and 2005 um, driving for Madsen Motorsports, who Brett Hearn drives for now. And uh, in 2004, we ran small block, and we won, like, 12 races, and we did really good. And then, um, you know, we moved up to big blocks the next year and really struggled uh, as a rookie. And it, we really thought we were going to do a little bit better. But, um, you know, that was 2005. Now, five years down the road, uh, you can really look back and see the lessons that we learned and uh, apply that to where we're running now. Coming into this season, you had a new combination. You, know, you did your own deal there for a while. Now you're working with Tom Cohen. How's that going? It's awesome. Um, we still have our own cars, um, you know, backed by Marty Burdick and Jeff Daly and, um, you know, Bob Cordova and everybody at Pete's Lugs, Finger Food Products. Um, you know what I mean? So we run that in the Super Dirt Series races. Um, but it really just gave, teaming up with Tom and, and Tad Parks with the small block car, and, you know, Tom Cullen obviously has a big block. Um, it just gave our program a lot more depth. And it's really helped, you know what I mean? We got a really good car for here on Sundays at Utica Chrome. Um, we got a really good small block car that we take, you know, on the road. And then, um, you know, me and Jeff Daly, we have, we have two of our own cars that frees us up for all the big block series races and all the specials that we want to hit. So um, there's a lot of depth there, and uh, we'll be able to hit a lot of the races. So that's, uh, that's the plan, go to as many races as we, as we can. You mentioned that depth. We know the last few weeks you've been on quite a tear. You know, you've got a multiple feature wins this season. What's the secret? You know, it, there's no really secret. Everything's pretty basic. You know, um, everybody looks around, and if some, one guy gets going good, oh, he's, you know what I mean, he's got the secret set up. But there's not. Um, it's just covering your bases and, and taking care of the fundamentals, um, you know, making just making sure you're in a routine. And um, that comes down to the pit crew that we got. We got, like, six or seven great guys that, uh, that are just awesome. You know what I mean? I have the best crew right now that I've ever had, really, in my life racing. Um, and it just frees everything up. It makes it a calm night. One guy takes care of tires, one guy does fuel gears, um, and, and so forth. But it frees you up to really concentrate on the driving aspect of it. And, um, you know, like I said, when you go race to race to race, we're, we're not wearing out equipment. Everything's fresh when you get to the next track. And, um, you know, it's just helping us stay on top of the wave. Unfortunately, not everyone was able to make it into the A-Main during their heat event. But they do have a second chance. They can run the B-Main or the Concies. Let's send it up to the tower to Mike and Doug. Three consolation races would go for the drivers who didn't get in yet. 12 laps, 12 cars at each. Ronnie Johnson gets this one started here, Mike. Yeah, Ronnie Johnson and another track regular, Danny Barron, are leading the way here. 
Danny Barron, of course, a little trouble here early on. One car heading to the pits as we've got a new leader, Danny Barron, in front now out of turn number two. Yeah, track regulars really have an advantage here at Utichrome, and Danny Barron and Ronnie Johnson will lead this one down to the checker. Gary Tompkins, Ryan Odez, they're the first ones on the outside looking in. Second consolation race on the track. There's some big name drivers here, Jeff Strunk in the one, and Matt Shepard driving the 29 in this show. Yeah, two cars, you, you see different drivers in normally. Jeff Brunell in that number 29, but right now Matt Shepard putting the moves on Jeff Strunk. And as you see, those two were leading, and look at this action going on behind him as Mitch Gibbs tries to get a nice three-wide move out of turn number three. Yeah, Mitch Gibbs, he's got Willie Decker there and the 1A of Brian Weaver. More people who know this track very well. Like we said, these Consies were producing some great action. Watch Willie Decker get a good run off the bottom in the number 10. But in the end, it would be Matt Shepard with the big victory. Jeff Strunk in a pickup ride. That's the ride Stuart Friesen runs Saturdays at five mile point. He would get into the show with his second place third and final consolation race. Last chance to get in for these drivers. And Bob Henry and Brett Hearn would lead them into turn number one. Not very often you see Brett Hearn running a consolation race, Doug. And Vic Coffey back behind there, too, taking some time off from the late model race. He's sitting back there in position number three. But it would be Hearn who would lead them into three and four for the first time. Yeah, Brett Hearn battling there. Bob Henry, a weekly regular, and right now he's trying to hold off one of the invaders, Big Coffee. Of course, uh, Bob's also been doing some asphalt stuff, small block super up at Oswego, but he would watch his qualifying spot number two would get away from him, so Hearn would go on to get the win, and as you can see, Vic Coffee was catching him there in the end, so he's in the show as well. Now, for the drivers that didn't make it in through either the heats or the consolation races, one more chance to be made, and you can either, if you win this, take $1,200, load up and watch the race, or you can go into the Victoria 200. Yeah, get 1000 bucks to start that feature event, so if you make it, you're only giving up 200 bucks, and who knows, you might even advance farther than that. Watch this race and right here, Ryan Phelps, the number 99, normally does not run here at Utica Rome, but the 10 car, Willie Decker, here runs here every week. Yeah, Willie Decker pilots at... 10 car on Friday nights over the Brewerton Speedway, but normally here at Utica, drives the 1X machine. And he would get around Ryan Phelps up into position number two. Gary Tompkins leading here late. Here's Decker taking a shot at him. Classic slide job like we see here at Utica Rome. Coming right back on the bottom, Gary Tompkins gets the win, and since he won this race last year, he's not going to take the money. He's going to go in and try for the big money in the Victoria 200. It's time for the feature event. We're getting ready to roll them off here at Utica Rome, but weather is a little bit of a concern here today. Could wind up being a 100 lap feature race, and these guys are gonna race to 100 lap right after these messages. is back. It's the Stars and Stripes 100 at Rolling Wheels Raceway Park. Fourth of July Sunday featuring a Super Dirt Car Series 100 lap main event plus sportsmen, stock cars, and fireworks. Get a family four pack of tickets for $50 plus kids nine and under free. For more information, call the Speedway office or visit online at rollingwheelsraceway.com. The Stars and Stripes 100 at Rolling Wheels Raceway. Sunday, July 4th. You and your family are invited to our house. Maybe your insurance agent is not there for you when the chips are down. If you have a claim or need customer service, Gates Cole agents are there for you 24-7. Learn more. Gates Cole makes it easy to choose the policy you need. Check our rates. They may be lower. Call us for a quote. Switch to Gates Cole. Smash and Crabs 2009, Volume 21. Get some of the wildest acts from around the Northeast and Canada on Smash and Crabs Volume 21. Over 15 different tracks, over 60 minutes of wild flips, crashes, and not so memorable moments caught on tape. Purchase online at ThomasRacingVideos.com. Order your copy today. Oswego Speedway is the short track equivalent to Indianapolis. Find out why they call it the Indy of the East. Weekly racing action kicks off each Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. Watch the Novella Super Modifieds and the Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Stars race to victory lane. Oswego Speedway is your ticket to short track racing. Call 315-342-0646 or go to OswegoSpeedway.com. Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modifieds. 
Welcome back to the Utica Rome Speedway. The Victoria 200 is on the card today. Doug Elkins and Mike Mallett with you. Track Wide Thunder is back here at Utica Rome Speedway for the second show in a row. Mike should be a real good one today. A capacity crowd is on hand for this one. Yeah, every time Utica Rome Speedway has a big show, we pack the house. They do, too. 81 degrees is the weather out there. The big thing here we're watching is what we see at the bottom there. There is a chance of thunderstorms. There's a bunch of stuff building over to the west. So basically, we're going to keep watching the radar as this race goes on. Yeah, Utica Rome Speedway, big banked half mile speedway all clay and lightning quick half mile like you said a lot of banks lots of slide jobs and one thing they do here there's companies that will actually analyze the clay gene cole has the clay analyzed before they lay it down the way this race will work two 100 lap segments as the race has always been as you can see roughly half the field has made it in 10,000 to win and the big thing here is the changes to the card halfway but also changes to the track we never know what they're going to do Sometimes they dig it up, sometimes they don't. And if they dig it up, it opens up lots of grooves and changes everything. Bobby Barron, and Todd Burley, they'll be in row number one. Row two, Billy Decker and Rick Lawbach. Row number three is next. That's where you'll find Michael Storms and Larry White. Row number four, we will find A.J. Slideways, Alan Johnson, and former track champion Pat Ward. Row number five, Stuart Friesen wins a lot of races here, and the doctor, Danny Johnson. Row six, Brad Elger and T-Mac from McCready. Tim taking off some time from late model series. Andy McKetty, Jimmy Phelps, they're in row number seven. In row eight, we find Casey Williams and Alan Barker, a couple track regulars. And Tim Fuller, also a late model guide. Kevin Bates, look at those crowd clouds back behind him. Matt Shepard, Ronnie Johnson here in row number 10. Row number 11 is next, Danny Barron and Vic Coffey made it in through the Concy. Row number 12, Brett Hearn, long way to go in this one, and Mitch Gibbs. Mitch Gibbs won a lot of races here. Brian Weaver, Jeff Strunk, they are in row number 13. And row number 14, Gary Tompkins off his B Maven and Willie Decker. So let's see what happens here as we get ready to go. A couple of in-car cameras. Let's look out the left side of Stuart Friesen's car. That's the Westmoreland Golf Club in-car camera. Nice look, look off the left-hand side of that car. And we look at the waste management in-car camera here with the doctor, Danny Johnson. Danny Johnson taking us around. New sponsors, new colors for him this year. Mike Payne, of course, a new team for him. As Matt Burdick gives him the white flag. And again, look at those clouds off to the left. I have a feeling we might want to hustle here today at Utica Rome Speedway. So next time they come by, they'll be racing as the Victoria 200 is just about ready to get underway. I'll tell you what, Doug, I am excited. I am ready to go. This is it. This is what you wait for as a race fan. All the big boys in attendance here at Utica Rome for this Victoria 200. And as you can see, the track is black and slick and wide. It's going to be interesting to see what groove uh, is fast at what point of the race and the thing is Utica Rome it, that moves around fast early might be low and the next thing you know everybody's up at the top side you just don't know here so here we go Bobby Barron that double zero he is the current points leader at Utica Rome Speedway and he'll look to bring this field down to the green flag Todd Burley's outside of him the 89 Todd also runs a small block at Ransomville Speedway on Friday nights as the green is out and the Victoria 200 is underway everybody charges down into turn number one and we've got trouble we've got a car around right in the middle of the field that's Brad Alger looked like he spun and got going again could and see what happened to him there. And Danny Varon is also slow on the inside. That's him to the left side of those white uh, Ute tires down on the inside. But Brad Alger uh, has a problem over here in turn number two. Yeah, he'll get it refired. He'll have to fall all the way to the tail of the field for this restart. Let's see if we can see what happened here. Uh, different angle from up top. I see Danny Johnson in there. Oh, there's Alger. I don't know. Did he run into Danny or, or what was that? It looks like he got into the backside of Danny Johnson. No place to go. The car was spinning. The amazing thing is, Let's listen. Ooh, sound like there was some contact there. That was a pretty big noise uh, coming from behind Danny Johnson's car there. So we'll line them up, try this one more time. Now, the caution that this is an original restart situation, so the, the lap counter has not moved. Everybody's right back where they were, with the exception, of course, of the two cars that we saw, uh, Danny Varon and Brad Alger. So let's try it again. Take number two on the Victoria 200. Bobby Barrett again in the bottom. Todd Burley right there with him. Rick Laubach is in the second row along with Billy Decker as the green flag comes out. Second time's the charm here this time. We all. And again, Bobby Barron, just like last time, bolts to the lead, and he'll take him up into turn one. We saw Rick Laubach get a shot of the yellow car, trying to make a move down on the inside as they go two, three, four wide, making their way through one and two for the first time. Yeah, everybody's slicing and dicing here, looking for racing room, trying to find that fast lane early to get to the front. You see T-Mac there, that's the four with a red number four on the side of it. He's down in the bottom following Alan Johnson, and you see Bobby Barron already out to a pretty good lead. And here's a good shot of Stuart Friesen's in car as he'll take it down into turn number one. And listen to the motor or lack thereof. Where is it? There it is. 
boy, you really have to wait a long time before you pick up the throttle on a slick track. I think that's one of the things that the fans don't quite understand is, is how long you really have to wait and how, how wide of a right foot you need to drive one of these things on a, on a racetrack like this. Yeah, a slick track like this definitely will always go to the guy with a lot more experience and the guy that has the idea of how to set the car up. Yeah, it's very rare to see the rookies do well in these. Look at this three-wide battle. you got Danny Johnson on the bottom, Pat Ward in the middle, and Larry White, the youngster, up, and we've got a good battle going on here for position number two. Yeah, you got a track regular in Todd Burley and a guy that very rarely comes to Peter with Rick Laubach, and they'll work each other over here. Rick Laubach, a stud down in Pennsylvania, wins a lot of races down there. Got a lot of good rides this year, too. Uh, Scooby, they call him, and he is battling for second spot, but he better watch out. Here comes Billy Decker. Yeah, Billy Decker's going to look to the inside. One guy even lower on the track, the 14J of Alan Johnson. You'll see Alan Johnson down there on the lot in this race. Yeah, an old car, too. An old 2001 Bicknell is what Alan does. Of course, he plays with these cars a little bit, so I, I doubt it's exactly how it rolled off the factory floor back in 2001. And you didn't even see Bobby Barron in the shot. He is just driven away from everybody right now. Bobby Barron has been on hot streak here in 2010. Yes. He has been the guy to beat, whether it's at Glenridge, Fonda, or Utica Rome. Yeah, he's been fast at all three of those tracks, having maybe his finest year coming off what was his finest year last year. So uh, the rich keep getting richer in the world of dirt modified racing as we watch Danny Johnson down on the inside of the youngster, Larry White. Yeah, Larry White put that impressive move on in his heat race event, working the high side to pick up the win, and now he's trying to do the same here in this, in this feature event. Racing for sixth place right there. Let's go back to the Danny Johnson. Love listening to this lack of throttle. Boy, he's really just waiting on that car forever. Here's another guy making his way up through the field. That's Stuart Friesen on the outside as he's trying Jimmy Phelps as they go into turn number three. Yeah, Stuart Friesen, multi-time track champion at Utica Rome, and he's working it up on the high side there with that Westmoreland Golf Club at number one. And that's a new ride for him here this season. That's true. Of course, he has a couple of rides. This is the one he's been using on Sunday, the one that Jeff's drunk is. That's the one he's been in at five-mile point. There's the four cars. That's Tim McCready. That's the first four car. The one with the red four on the side, that's Michael Storms as Matt Shepard watches in the 29. Yeah, good battle here between teammates. And you know Michael Storms, he wants to beat T-Mac because T-Mac just hopped in the ride. This is his first time in the car. And, of course, Tim McCready's car is a small block. It's a 358 cubic inch engine under the hood. And the one for Michael Storms, he's got the big block with the 467. I think the small block might be the way to go right now, though, Mike. Yeah, on a slick track, you always want a little bit less power. That way you don't spin the wheels and spin the tires off. But, hey, here's Brett Hurd making his way from way back in the day. Yeah, he started way back. Let's see, where was he again? 23rd starting spot is where Brett Hearn was, and he is now making his way up through some pretty good cars, as you can see. That's Michael Storms and Matt Shepard right ahead of him, so he is he's inside the top 12 right now. Yeah, so Hearn will continue that run, and here's Jimmy Phelps in that Troyer number 99, 98H. That's his series ride. Sometimes you see him in that 99J, this family. Yeah, that's right. Two teams for him, and actually, doesn't seem to matter which one he gets in right now. They're all, they're all pretty fast right now, but Jimmy only runs his track maybe two, three times a year. And now he's working on Matt Shepard. And Matt Shepard, in the past, he's another driver that has been a track champion at Utica Rome. That's true. I forgot about that. He, before he went over to Wheatsport, he ran here a lot. Let's watch this battle. Danny Johnson has the spot. Pat Ward, boy, he was Mr. Everything at this track for the last few seasons, but uh, still winless here so far in 2010. Yeah, he's struggling a little bit here to get things going in, in the right direction. But if it's like any other, he'll forget it figured out. He will, too. He's just too good of a racer, too good of equipment. He knows this track very well. As we ride with Danny Johnson, you see Danny's kind of moved his line up the racetrack a little bit bit as Pat Ward continues to try to get to the inside. There's Ward trying right now as Larry White watches from just behind him. Yeah, Larry White, he's giving up on that top side, it looks like, right now, because he was running way out there on the high side, but now he's following Ward, following the veteran to get that line up. And this track changes all the time, like we mentioned. Of course, with all these, all the power that these big blocks make, it's going to change a lot. There's our leader. We haven't seen Bobby Barron in quite some time, and uh, he just left his son right there. Yeah, just put a lap on Danny Barron, and he'll take it down the back stretch, closing in on the back of the pack. So as I like to say... Left traffic, always an equalizer. And it will be right here. Brad Alger, remember him from the uh, uh, earlier caution. He's the next one that's in line there for Bobby Barron. And there's second place Todd Burley running all alone right now. Yeah, Todd Burley in that original Pizza Logs, number 89B, biding his time. He knows it's a long race. We're only 12 laps into this 200 lap event. Yeah, so really the goal for the first 100, stay on the lead lap. That's the primary goal. Save your tires. Oh, somebody's off the racetrack over in turn number three. Is, is that Willie Decker? Yes, it is. That is Willie Decker in the 10 car. It looked like he footed with the top side one too many times, and it sucked him off the high side of the speed. So Willie Decker will shake the cobwebs loose. He'll pick up at the back of the pack, and we'll be back with more. You're watching Track Wide Thunder. Hey, we are 16 laps in the Victoria 200. We just had our second caution of the race. And as you can see, the lap counter did move while we were in commercial. The caution laps do count. 
So we are ready to go back to racing with the Barons on the front row. Bobby on the bottom, Danny on the outside of him. Of course, Danny is one lap down. Yeah, Danny trying to race the old man and get the lap back here, but I don't think Bobby's going to have any of that. Well, if anything, maybe just drive at his tire tracks, kind of see what he's doing. But as you can see, the guys back behind him, they don't want to mess with Danny. They want to get by him as quickly as they can. There's Todd Burley trying the inside as Billy Decker sits right behind him. Yeah, Todd Burley will clear Danny Barron there, and now Billy Decker will try to do the same. Three wide they were for a moment going Four into the turn. Uh, look out, Stuart Friesen going to go around into number three. Hmm, back end came around at him there. Hard to tell what happened. And did he stall that thing out over there? It looks like he's going to turn the fuel back on, get it refired, and try to get back into this race. This would be good. You guys would see it's a hand clutch. Actually, you do that to engage the gear. And then once it gets going, let's wait for the shift to second here. It's got to be that. It is right there. Pull that back down into second, and that's the only shift he's got to make now for the rest of the race. It's in drive, and uh, so he is ready to go. So hopefully everything okay on the freezing car. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. He's in the middle here, going into turn three, and ooh, looked like some contact there. Maybe uh, Jimmy Phelps getting in the left front after he had already spun. Freezing's going to the pits. What are they doing? I'm going to come back in next caution. Give me the second feature left rear. All right, so now we know his strategy. He's going to come back in next caution. Obviously concerned about a tire maybe because of that spin or because of the contact. Yeah, you got to wonder what the issue is there. The thing to remember with these cars, there is no two-way radios. These guys are all it's only true. running one-way radios, and they're listening to the tower. They have no communication with the crew other than what we just saw. Hand signals is about the best you can do. So here we are, back to green now. Of course, that period... Uh, did count in the lap counter, but Stewart did not lose a lap in the pit area. That's something they do at all these big races now. Back to racing. 21 of 200 is where we are right now. Yeah, we'll pick up the action in the middle of the pack. There's that 29 again. Remember, that is Super Matt Shepard in the 29. Yeah, Jeff Brownell still recovering uh, from uh, a procedure he had done, so hopefully Jeff will be back out on the racetrack here real soon as we look back through the field a little bit. You see Shepard on the outside there with Alan Johnson, Jimmy Phelps. Oh, man, good cars everywhere you look. Yeah, th there's the best of the best here in the top of this one, and they're all rising to the top. You know, we talked about Brett Hearn coming from the back. Matt Shepard, another guy that's working his way up through the pack. You see Pat Ward down on the inside there trying to get Shepard, but... Looks like Shepard's found something here on the outside. Yeah, right after these restarts, a lot of these guys have the chance to cool those tires down, and on a slick track, that will give you the opportunity to make a move on a couple of, on the high side a couple of times. And I think once the surface cools, too, sometimes that can make a check change a little bit, but it's all about finding the fast groove, and Matt Shepard has found it now. Here he goes low on Laubach. Boy, Shepard is shot out of a cannon right now. Yeah, he drove by Laubach, and you can see a drastically different line there for Shepard than Laubach when he made that move. Yeah, I saw him say he was waiting for what Laubach was going to do, because it looks like Shepard's car is pretty much working anywhere he wanted. He just waited for Laubach to push up a little bit, drove right underneath him, and Shepard is a man on a mission right now. Yeah, Shepard in that 29 car, he knows he's got to get as many spots as possible, get up there early, that way you're not in fear of losing a lap. Look at that action back there, Alan Johnson down low, outside of him. Uh, that's the Tim McCready car, as you see McCready picking up a spot right there. Larry White's in front of him, and looks like McCready might be finding something down low as well. Yeah, and he's got Alan Johnson right on his back bumper, and Tim Fuller, Jimmy Phelps bringing it off the turn. Wow, and already, this is the battle for position number three. Matt Shepard, boy, it didn't take him long to run down Billy Decker. Yeah, once you find that line, that's the place to be, and everybody else is still searching, so maybe Decker will, will use Shepard as someone to follow here after he gets by. Boy, just roll right by him, right up, and so Shepard now up another position, and as you can see, he is really making it work right through the middle right now. Yeah, so now he's got Bobby Barron and Todd Burley in front of him, and Shepard really lifting the left front that time off the of turn two. Yeah, they're really getting a lot of bite on this racetrack right now as we watch Decker as he's basically trying to run the same line that Shepard is. And that's a good thing. When, when somebody passes you, you figure they know something you don't. Let's ride around with Danny Johnson as he's here on the front stretch. Yeah, Danny Johnson trying to catch the Quaker shaker, Rick Laubach, as they take it down into turn number one. See him trying to get that thing down to the bottom. That's why you have to wait on Of course, as soon as you get off the gas, all the weight in the car goes right over to that right rear. Then you just slowly work the throttle again, and that's what Danny's trying to do right now to find some room to get around Rick Laubach. Yeah, Laubach still sliding up off the turn a little bit, and that'll allow the doctor to close in. you got to wonder if the doctor's going to use the same as in that Shepard. Here's Ronnie Johnson down to the inside of Stuart Friesen. And, and Mitch Gibbs, that's the car at the top side there. Looks like he's got a problem. Yeah, Mitch Gibbs off the pace. Can't see anything wrong with the left side of the car. We'll have to wait till we get a little look at the right side. All the way that thing's sitting. I'm wondering if, yeah, he's tore up that right rear. Look at it. Yeah, right rear flat on the 2G of Mitch Gibbs. you got to wonder, did he run over something? Is there something on the speedway? Or maybe is this track starting to take some rubber? I don't wonder. He is going to head right to the pit area. And Stuart Friesen, oh, that's right. He said he was going to do this. So Stuart Friesen coming in for a pit stop. And let's 
remind them, Doug, this is not a NASCAR pit stop. That's it right. won't be 13 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> yeah, a lot tougher to get these tires on and off. And, of course, uh, we'll work with a lot of different tools here. So they got a lot of folks there to take off that left rear. So we got to wonder about that. Why the left rear, though, Mike? Any I idea? I wonder if he maybe felt a vibration in it or something like that. Maybe it wasn't tightened up. Who knows? Yeah, sometimes it may just lost a little air. And he felt maybe he had more stagger in the car. But uh, freeze him. We'll head back up. Boy, they just got that thing on there in time. <laughs> yeah. So they're ready to go. They're going to tag onto the tail. And again, as we mentioned before, you do not lose a lap in the pits under caution. That is for safety reasons. That's true. Yeah, they want people blasting through the pit area. And you saw him reach down. That was that shift he made. Now let's zip ahead in our coverage a little bit now. Lap number 37, and this is the battle for fourth place. Yeah, this was picking up right before that last caution. Now it picks up once again. Rick Laubach, again, an invader. And Danny Johnson in the 27, working them over here as they come off the turn. I'm just going to listen to this for a second here, Mike. how close they were coming out of that corner. That's good stuff right there, Mike. And that's why these guys are professional race car drivers. They don't like let you and I drive these race cars. That's true. That's true. But uh, I got to tell you, you got to be impressed with Rick Laubach. Here's a guy who does not see this place much at all. He doesn't run up here much at all, maybe three, four times a year. And he's doing a good job holding off Danny Johnson, a guy who's run well and run well here a lot. And Danny just picked up a spot right there. Right. Danny Johnson finally gets by Rick Laubach. And you mentioned Laubach, not a lot of experience. He runs down in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. And very rarely do you get a slip track like this. And look at that thing lean over on the right side as Laubach uh, is going to try to stay with Danny Johnson right here as we are about 40 laps into this first 100 lap segment. Remember, we take a break at the lap 100 mark. So Danny Johnson going to pull away from Rick Laubach and we'll take a look back through the field and you see a bunch of gypsum cars all right together. Decker, Larry White right there, and Tim McCready. Those guys know each other well. They've turned a lot of laps. Bobby Barron's turned the laps up front. He's leading. We'll be back with more with the Victoria 200. Welcome back to the Utica Rome Speedway. Trackwide Thunder's coverage of the Victoria 200 continues. We're about a quarter of the way through that car you saw coming out of the pits. That was Gary Tompkins. Had to change a tire as we get ready to go back to racing. Green is out. Bobby Barron leads, but that car in second, that's not second place. That's Stuart Friesen. He's a lap down. Yeah, Stuart Friesen is going to do all he can now to work back by Bobby Barron and try to get back on the lead lap. Let's ride with Danny Johnson. And look at that right front tire. That's showing some wear. Look at it. Fraying on the inside right there. Yeah, you can see the rubber coming off that tire, and that's a byproduct of a daytime racing surface. And right now, you got to wonder, who else is going to have tire issues? And if the right front looks like that, What's the right rear looking like right now? And as you look at this racetrack, notice all of a sudden early in the race, we saw people all over the place. There were one groove now, and look what the surface looks like in that groove. This track is taking rubber, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, you can see it right through the middle of the corner there. It's, it's a different color brown on the racing surface, and that's where the rubber is being laid down. Now, you watch these veteran guys that will put the right rear right in that. Other guys that are trying to make passes, they'll get outside of that, and you watch everybody go right on by. That's true, too. It almost makes it like an asphalt track at this time. So basically what happens is the surface is so hot that the, the rubber from these American racers racing tires is actually getting laid down on the racetrack. we got another car in trouble here. That's Kevin Bates. Yeah, Kevin Bates. And he has got a right rear tire flat. So that as we begin to talk about it, flat tire is beginning to be a problem. Yeah, at least they didn't fray that one like everybody else. And of course, Bates has been running back at the Southern Tier this year, Five Mile Point, and Pencan Speedway is where he's running. So uh, this is going to be very interesting as a lot has changed here in the last few laps at Utica Rome. Yeah, and watch Stuart Friesen right now. He is really pressing Bobby Barron, making Barron work that right rear tire. And Barron, you know he doesn't want to do that because he can see the track just like we can. That's true. And of course, the other thing is, I guess maybe Baron figures, I don't want to let Friesen by because if he's back in the lead lap, I might have to deal with him later. So it, it's going to be a tough situation for him as he decides how hard he wants to race Friesen. Yeah, Friesen has made mistakes in these big races before. He won another 200 lap race, even from the New Yorker 200, where he actually spun around in the middle of the race, went all the way to the back, came all the way back through. So you know he can do it. Yes, he can. And like you said, knows the track well. So uh, that's why Bobby Barron wants to keep him behind him if he can. The other way you can tell the track's taking rubber is notice they're picking up the left front now. Yeah, that left front is really coming up off the ground on all these cars as they roll over to the right rear. That means they're getting maximum traction. Early on, we saw everybody just kind of skating around. Yeah, and you can really see the difference, like we said, in the color of the racetrack right now. So basically, your goal is stay in the groove, don't lose a spot, and obviously, you got to start thinking, I need to save my tires. Yeah, tire conservation is a big thing here. you got to make it 100 laps on that right rear tire. See Tim Fuller, he is there in the Smith Brothers, number 74. This is a team, he picks up rides with them every so often as we go a little bit further up through the field. Looks like Timmy McCready putting pressure on Rick Laubach. So as they come off the turn, this is the battle for the fourth spot right now. Laubach has it, and Tim McCready wants nothing more than to take it away from him. And in a situation like this on a rubber down racetrack, you almost have to wait for the driver in front to make a mistake. Laubach went a little wide that time out of turn two. Yeah, Laubach missed the rubber by just a couple inches, and there goes Tim McCready on by. 
just like that. Now Laubach will tuck right back in behind, see if maybe he can repay the, fee the favor to him as we watch Pat Ward now is behind Laubach, and he's going to try to get up to position number five. Yeah, Pat Ward just saw Tim McCready go by, and you know he's going to be waiting for the exact same opening here as they come off the turn two. That's true, and now we look a little bit ahead. That's Todd Burley, Danny Johnson. They're in positions number two and three on the racetrack, and there's Danny going to take a look down at the bottom. And again, we take a look at that right front tire, and look how much wear is still going on. And Danny not uh, trying to stay in the rubber as much because I guess he knows if he's in the lane Burleys and he's not going to get by. Yeah, it looks like Danny's almost running a little bit lower lane getting into the corner, hoping maybe to sneak through that opening and then slide up into the rubber as they come off the turn. Because you don't want to get all four tires out of the rubber, but if you get two in there, you're still okay. And I think that's what Danny's trying to do right now is just get those right side tires in there, maybe get the good drive off. Here's Pat Ward now going to try Laubach for position number five. Yeah, Laubach really struggling right now to keep that car in that rubber lane. Pat Ward, though, he knows the deal. He's running it right there. He puts the right sides in the rubber, and he'll lift that left front and try to drive underneath Laubach off of turn two. Boy, got a good runner in that time. They go in a turn. Turn number three. Who's it going to be? And Pat Ward picks up another spot. And oh, trouble for Larry White. Flat right rear tire for the 99L. Yeah, and this is exactly what we were just talking about, Doug. Tire wear is now going to be a factor there as another flat tire in Larry White. Unfortunately for him, he's going to have to head to the pit area. And, of course, Larry's pit, he's off in turn two. A lot of the folks that like to pit over there, they think it's a little easier to get in and get out of the pit area. And this is a perfect situation right here where he wants to do that very thing. Yep, get off the track, get back on as quick as possible. As long as the caution flags out, he doesn't lose a lap. So the right rear, a fresh one goes on. Looks like a freshly stuffed one. But we'll take a break. You're watching the Victoria 200 on Track Wide Thunder. You and your family are invited to our house. It's time to switch to Gates Coal Insurance. There are benefits. Personal service, attention to detail, prompt and fair claim settlements. You may qualify for a multi-line discount. Give us a call. We can design a policy for you. We offer more ways to put together a program for you and your budget. We at Gates Coal would like the opportunity to serve you. Call us or stop in. Switch to Gates Coal. Summer when they're dirt racing and weeds pouring. It's the All Star 100 weekend. See Super Dirt Car Modified Crates in two giant shows where every lap matters. So a huge racing party with camping, fireworks, and music leading up to Saturday's 100 lap shootouts. Big blocks, big money, big pyro, and big fun. The only thing not big are the prices. $39 two day reserve seat packages, including pit passes for a limited time, are on sale now at AllStar100Weekend.com. Friday and Saturday, July 16th and 17th, Cayuga Cali Fair Speedway Weedsport. Welcome back to the Utica Rome Speedway. The Victoria 200 is on the card here today. Tire wear has been an issue as we get closer to the halfway break here at this event, but no problems out front for Bobby Varon. He has led this one since the drop of the green flag. Yeah, Tim McCready got a good restart there, but not good enough to get by Danny Johnson as they race up into turns one and two. And again, everybody looking for that rubber line. Yeah, you can see Brian Weaver and Stuart Friesen banging wheels a little bit that time down in one and two. To head down the back track, Weaver and Friesen still banging wheels now as they head into turn three. And look at Andy Bacchetti dive to the inside. Andy Bacchetti, of course, uh, Accord, Lebanon Valley have been his primary homes. He runs here on and off. He's been a regular at this track a few times over his career, so he knows this place pretty well. Yeah, they call him the wild child because he's one of those guys that likes to run the high side when the track's nice and heavy, but today, not so much of the wild child. Yeah, but anything, keep the car under your child is what you want to be today. As we watch Friesen, that uh, car right there in front of him, uh, that is the 1X car of Casey Williams. Yeah, Casey Williams working there is Friesen watches him go by up there in the rubber line and then you've got Laubach there with Andy Bacchetti. And of course uh, Williams is a lap car at this point. He is down one lap. You see uh, oh, Matt Shepard contacted. Oh there goes Coffee up the racetrack. Everybody just got jammed up a little bit there in turn number two. Yeah when everybody's running one lane and whoa now we got a car on on the back stretch. That's Billy Decker. Billy Decker saves it and there's another car stopped up top side of the racetrack. I just caught a glimpse of it. I think that might have been Jimmy Phelps. Yeah it looked like that Wave Energy number 98H coming to a stop and yes indeed it is. There he is on the back stretch. Caution flag out once again and Everything looks okay on the car of Jimmy Phelps, so I'll have to see what happens. Oh, the right front is down. Yeah, right front tire. And if we think back to Danny Johnson's right front, you got to wonder, yeah. is that from the track or is that from contact in that incident? No, near the other, though. He's going to have to go to the pit area and get that change. So a uh, change coming up here for Jimmy Phelps as, again, we're getting closer to the halfway point. And, boy, if you weren't thinking about your tires before, you certainly are right now. Yeah, with all these flat tires we've been seeing, you know, every driver in that car is going, oh, oh man, is mine the next one? You know they're going to feel every rattle, every jingle. 
can restart now with six laps to go. Remember, you don't lose a lap under caution. The lap counter does keep moving. Just a few laps to go in this segment. Bobby Barron continues to lead. And now up to second, there goes T-Mac. Yeah, Tim McCready making the move on Danny Johnson. Got a good restart there. He got it on the inside, right in that rubber lane, able to drive by the doctor. So T-Mac, well, maybe not yet. Oh, they touched that time over in turn two. Yeah, the doctor working him over, but again, he's got to be thinking about that right rear tire. He doesn't want to push it too much. That's exactly right. He's in third place. Good side-by-side -side battle for position number five as we watch that coming out of turn number four. And how about Stuart Friesen still moving to the front with that number one machine? Well, he's doing a nice job. Good strategy for him. He's inside the top five right now. Running in fifth. Tim Fuller right behind him in sixth. You see Michael Storms. That's the other number four. He is in position number seven. You just saw him come into the shot there. Yeah, Michael Storm's going to try to roll one lane higher as Tim Fuller works down on the inside, and they're side-by-side -side off Oh, the and our leader's got a problem. Bobby Varon pulls high at a turn four. Bobby Varon coming up four laps shy of the halfway point with the double zero. You know that's heartbreaking. Oh, he has been dominating this race to this point. Just pulled high in turn number four, so Bobby Varon and the Dave Cruikshank going Dover break double zero will take the car back into the pit area and get a new rear tire on there. But, man, just four laps is all he needed to get to the break. That was it, and you know he's got to be mad at himself inside that car. He pushed it. You remember earlier we were talking about Stuart Friesen pushing him, and that might have been a byproduct of that. So they will change that tire. Varon, again, will not lose a lap, but he will lose a ton of track position. And in a situation like this with a rubber down racetrack, that's huge. Yeah, that is definitely huge, Doug. You know, you never want to lose all that track position. A lot of cars now between himself and the lead of this Victoria 200. So the tire is almost on. Bobby Varon will come back out of the racetrack. So we'll be lucky if we get uh, maybe one more lap in here before that break. And they are going to take the break at 101. We have received word that his weather coming, so they want to move this thing along as quickly as possible. So here comes Timmy McCready with the lead and the white, I believe comes out this time. Yeah, Timmy McCready's got to be confident in his right rear tire. He's able to pull away there from Danny Johnson on the restart. And look at Stuart Friesen. He's going up to the high side of that rubber, but it's Pat Ward on the low side able to hold him off. So Ward still in position number three. Friesen doing everything he can. My math was bad there. This will be the white flag lap this time around as Timmy McCready, right where he wants to be, leading at the break here at Utica Rome. So T-Mac takes him up and it turns one and two and still able to extend the lead, still putting that right rear tire right there through the middle of the corner in that rubber down line. Same thing with Danny Johnson behind him, but I got to tell you, McCready looks very quick right here, and the caution is out right now, so uh, they basically waited till the last car came across to complete lap 101, so we'll take a break here at the Victoria 200 with Tim McCready leading. What are they going to do at the break? What are the teams going to do? We'll find out when we come back. You're watching Track Wide Thunder. Welcome back here at the Utica Rome Speedway. Track Wide Thunder's presentation of the Victoria 200. We are just past the halfway point. 101 laps are complete as we celebrate Memorial Day with a big old race here at the Utica Rome Speedway. The teams are in the pit area right now making changes. Let's take a look at the lineup right now as we see it. Tim McCready, of course, got the lead there late when Bobby Varon headed to the pits with a flat tire. Danny Johnson is second. Pat Ward, Stuart Friesen, and Michael Storms are out the top five. Then it's Tim Fuller, Rick Laubach, Andy Bacchetti, Vic Coffey, and Matt Shepard. Our Chelsea Miller is down in the pit area, and she's got the race leader, Tim McCready, as he sits in his car. Here with Tim McCready, just finished uh, the first half and currently first place. Tim, a lot of guys complaining about tire issues. A lot of guys came in with flats. How are you uh, keeping your tires safe for the first half? Uh, I just probably got lucky. Uh, this four-star team with a Vinny Slurner on everybody that works on it, uh, they do a heck of a job. It's, uh, I'm just out there being lucky to steer it, so uh, hopefully we can put a hard enough tire on that'll... Uh, that will last, I guess, because uh, it looks like uh, it's going to be a tire-eating uh, tire place today, that's for sure. Definitely is. Um, I don't know if your crew guys have warned you at all. There is rain on the way. Are you going to plan to run the whole 100 laps here, or are you going to shoot more for a 50-lap feature? I, I don't know. You know, I don't even know what they're planning on doing. Uh, it's, uh, it's a different format. I haven't done this in a while, so it's... Uh, I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna probably you know go for the long haul. You always gotta go. For, you can't can't expect it to rain. So I'm just gonna. I trust Vinny. Whatever he wants to do is what we'll do. Obviously, back in a modified here today. How did this ride come about? Well, we hooked up a little bit last year. Yeah, we hooked up a little bit last year, and uh, when uh, when the other driver decided to do, uh, do his own deal, and, and uh, it was uh, some match made in heaven. Uh, Michael Storms is a heck of a job, and everybody that's part of this deal. Uh, it makes it easy for me to come back and want to do this stuff. That's for sure. Good luck in the second half. Thanks. So Tim McCready driving all night from West Virginia Motor Speedway after racing the late model to compete in the modified. Now let's go down to Chelsea and have a word with our third place driver, Pat Ward. Down here with Pat Ward, currently in third position here today. Your car is working really good in the last few laps here. You're going to change much for the second half? Uh, we're just going to put some fresh tires on it. We, we weren't really pushing it that hard, that hunter, because of uh, the rubber on the track. So 
hopefully we'll get the right tires on it and uh, be there at the end. Well, some weather moving into the area, are you concerned about that? Are you going to plan for a shorter feature at all, or are you going to plan for the full 100? I mean, the track's rubbered up now, so uh, what I go with now will be good at the end of the 100, I hope. So we're ready. Good luck here the rest of the day. Thank you. And, of course, Pat Ward and his crew will go to work. Got to grind before you sipe, and what they're going to do is that's basically something like you'd use just to sand your floor almost or something like that. But what they're going to do, too, is they have to cut grooves in there, and those grooves help get the heat out of the tire. Yeah, and on a track like this, it's taking rubber. You want as the, the least amount of heat as possible in those tires. Chelsea Miller is also caught up with our fourth-place runner, Stuart Friesen. Here is Stuart Friesen. Sue struggling a little bit in the first half, coming back after being a lap down, now currently in the top five. How does that feel? It's awesome. I was almost going to pull in there for a little bit, but, um, you know, it, once the track took rubber, I figured if I short pitted, all those guys were going to get flats, and we were able to come through and pass some cars. So um, let's keep trying. Keep going. we got three more to go. Changing anything major for the second half? No, I'd like to put a little more rubber on the tires, though. Good luck. Thank you. Of course, they're not going to be able to accommodate Stewart on that last wish, but he's probably not the only guy who's thinking that right now. So the teams make changes to the race the cars, getting ready for the second half. We'll be back with that second half. You're watching the Victoria 200 right here on Trackwide Thunder. Welcome back to the Utica Road Speedway. We're just ready to begin the second half of the Victoria 200 here on Trackwide Thunder. As the fans have paused, the mob lights are coming back out for the second half of the race. Yeah, 10 minute break. Everybody made the changes to the car. They're ready to back in the way. So, Elkins Mike Mallet up here in the tower. Kelsey Miller. Hardest American racer tire yeah. they can find and put that on the right rear so they can come back out and abuse it a little bit and run as many laps as they can. Or Stuart Friesen said, just put a little more rubber on there, but uh, that won't work, Stuart. There's a tire in the rack that they make that will do that. And you can see they're right back into the rubber down lane. And look at McCready pulling away right now out front. Yeah, Tim McCready able to pull away. Pat Ward here working over Danny Johnson. Pat Ward, a speedway regular. He knows the fast line on. Even with the rubber down, you know he's got some tricks up his sleeve. And you see Matt Shepard trying to work the outside of last year's winner, Gary Tompkins. Here goes Ward to the inside of Danny Johnson. Yeah, Rubbin's racing right there a little bit as they got into the turn. He gave him a little shot trying to get him the, up off that rubber lane, and now he'll make the move again off of turn four. Love the speed shot here. You can really see the cars drift up as they come out of turn four. Matt Shepard was the guy who was looking right at us right there. And one more time, Ward looking underneath. Can't make a stick. Whoa, hang on, Tim Fuller. He got off the rubber lane there and watch. Rick Laubach drive by on the inside. Well, maybe not. No, Rick did get it. I thought maybe Tim might be able to get back down there for a second. And right behind them, Baketti and Coffey going after it for a spot there as well. Yeah, look at that battle for position. There's three cars right together. Now we pick up Stuart Friesen and Michael Storms going at it once again. And Storms, of course, uh, his teammate is leading the race right now. He is in position number five. Would love to get by Stuart Friesen and up to fourth position. Yeah, again, we talked about it earlier. you got to wonder, is there any added pressure on the youngster, 23-year-old kid driving that four-star machine, knowing that Vinny's other car is leading the race? And, of course, Tim has driven that car on several other occasions, and Michael could not have been more gracious in those type of situations. Caution flag out here, and I don't see a car around at this point, uh, so I'm wondering what it is right now. But yellow is out here with 105 laps complete. So now we pick up the battle for the lead. Yeah, zipping ahead a little bit in our coverage here. 138 laps now complete, and as you can see, Pat Ward is on race leader, Tim McCready, and no... Bobby Barron is not the leader. He's at the tail end of the lead lap. Yeah, Todd Burley, Bobby Barron here right together. Those guys were running in positions one and two the whole first half. Now they're at the back of the pack. Pat Ward, Tim McCready, they're fighting for the lead. And Bobby Barron, who was so dominant in the first 100, cars never really came around here in the second 100. Yeah, it hasn't come around for him yet. He's working on Todd Burley, but it's awfully tough to pass. Again, that one rubber lane on the speedway. And Pat Ward... He's doing his darndest to get by Tim McCready and hasn't been able to make that move yet. Now, these guys are seeing the move over flag right here, so uh, they may not know. 
I'm talking about Todd Burley and Bobby Verrett, they might not know how close the leaders are, but they definitely know that they're coming, so they know they've got to go. Yep, so they know they got to go, and you can see Bobby Verrett turning up the wick a little bit. He keeps diving to the inside of Todd Burley, and again, there as they got into three and four, he did the same, and now Pat Ward dives to the inside of Tim McCready. Boy, I know Bobby Verrett made a good move that time. I think he might have him. Yes, he did, That's and that's tough on this type of racetrack right now. And now Burley gets a little Whoa. bit out of the rubber. Tim McCready tries to take advantage of the open door. Can't get by. Burley holds him off. Burley fighting to stay on the lead lap. So we will take a break. We're almost three quarters of the way through. You are watching the Victoria 200 right here on Track by Thunder. Oh, and Danny Johnson, who was third, is now in the pit area. And Danny Johnson, another one, victim of a flat tire. Wow, he was having a great run, too. So the 27J will change the right uh, rear tire. You see Mike Payne, uh, he's the crew chief on that car. He was the one that just carried the tire over. So they'll put a freshly ground one, a freshly siped tire on the 27J and try to get Danny Johnson back out. And remember, no, no worries about losing a lap because the, 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 basically they can't lose a lap in the pit area under yellow. Final restart coming up here now in the Victoria 200. Nine laps left to go. Timmy McCready and, of course, the 42P of Pat Ward. They've been up in front the whole way. Vic Poppy, another late model guy sitting right there in third. Michael Storms is in fourth. We've got just nine laps left to go. And Tim McCready gets a great restart there. Look at the gap he's able to put on Pat Ward already here down the front stretch. Nice start right there for McCready. Ward falls back just a little bit. You can see Pat trying to get as low as he possibly can, try to get a run out of the corner, but McCready's starting to pull away as they head to three. Yeah, Tim McCready this car is working perfect right now. That T.O. Pro car rolling right through the center of the corner. Very nicely, if you look, he's almost like he's driving on asphalt as he's not really sliding the car getting into the corner. And that's the thing on something like this. If you start sliding it around, that's what's going to wear the tire. So you, you want to keep the thing almost like go-kart racing at this point. Keep it as straight as you possibly can. Yeah, and there's a good shot. You can see both cars getting into the turn. You can see McCready almost driving the car into the turn where Pat Ward's still rolling over onto that right rear tire. And that rolling over is what's going to wear that right rear tire a little bit more. But yeah, good point there, Mike. You can see how much more that Ward's car is rolling over through the corners. So seven laps to go here. Tim McCready, he's looking good, looking strong right now as he keeps those tires underneath him off of turn number two. Watching third and fourth there for a second. Still coffee and storms in that position as basically they're just waiting to see if anything happens to the driver in front of them. Yeah, just right now everybody getting in line. Follow the leader as uh, you want to finish the race because a nice payday like we've been talking about for even guys inside the top five. $10,000 is what the winner's share of this will be, and that's what uh, a lot of the World of Outlaw Late Model races pay that Tim runs on a regular basis. So a standard paycheck for him if he can get five more laps when he comes around this time as they work through three and four. Yeah, so Matt Burdick's just going to wave to him this time as they drive by and let him know five to go. You know, Tim McCree is thinking, okay, just hold on for five more laps. Yeah, and after a long day like this, these guys can't wait for the caution to come out. And I would think this has got to be some of the most nerve-wracking racing you do when you're worried every corner... Did, did I feel the right rear? Is it slipping more? Is it going? You just don't know. Yeah, every become, everybody becomes a hypochondriac at this point. Every little sound, every little thing that goes on inside that race car is something else that they have to think about. And, of course, the worst job, though, is crew chief because you can't do anything about it. You're just watching I'm over there and hoping that the car stays together, that the tires stay up, and you can finish the race. Four laps left to go now as they work down the back stretch. Pat Ward looking for his first win at Utica Rome Speedway, but unless something happens to Tim McCready, it won't be happening today, although he did close in that time. Yeah, Pat Ward did close the gap. Pat Ward, two-time track champion at Utica Rome. He just never has the luck here in these big races to get his way to victory lane. He's got three more laps. Maybe luck will shine on him this time. So we'll see what happens here as they sort things out. You just got a shot there of third and four. Coffee and Storms still in that position. They'll get the parallel flags when they come around this time. Yeah, Tim McCready nice and straight again off of turn number four. Ward rolling the car over a little bit more that time. And there you see the two to Matt Burdick up there, uh, of course, uh, North Country resident. He's a teacher during the day and uh, does flagging at a whole bunch of places on the weekends. And he's going to get the white flag when they come around this time. Tim McCready can't wait to see that white. We can't wait to see the checker the next time around. Yeah, Tim McCready, dollar signs in his eyes right now. Half mile separating himself from 10,000. And there is the white flag. So McCready will feather foot it around this time. But the last lap, that's when you start hearing all the little creaks and noises inside that race car. Yeah, if you notice, as he went through turns, went into a little bit of a push there that time. And last time now in a turn from the three and four. Tim McCready is going to win the Victoria 200. $10,000 goes to McCready. Pat Ward picks up second spot. Vic Coffey in third. Michael Storms in fourth. And Andy McKetty rounds out the top five. So a good one here as we beat Mother Nature here today at the Utica Rome Speedway. Got it all 200 laps. And Tim McCready gets the biggest win of his season so far in the modified world. And we'll meet him when we come back. You're watching the Victoria 200 right here on Trackwise Thunder. You and your family are invited to our house. 
You should consider many options when buying business insurance. Consider reputation, stability, service capabilities. Reach us by internet, telephone, or stop in soon and switch to Gates Coal Insurance. It's time you insured with Gates Coal and enjoyed benefits. Reach us on the internet, telephone, standard mail, or stop in soon. Switch to Gates Coal. The fast track is back. It's the Stars and Stripes 100 at Rolling Wheels Raceway Park. Fourth of July Sunday. Featuring a Super Dirt Car Series 100 lap main event. Plus sportsmen, stock cars, and fireworks. Get a family four-pack of tickets for $50. Plus kids nine and under free. For more information, call the Speedway office or visit online at rollingwheelsraceway.com. The Stars and Stripes 100 at Rolling Wheels Raceway. Sunday, July 4th. Welcome back here to the New York and Rome Speedway in Bergen, New York. The Victoria 200 is now history, part of the Race of Champions Modified Tour on dirt for the 2010 racing season. Tim McCready is down in victory lane, and he is going to celebrate here. What a great win for him today, Mike. Yeah, big win for Tim McCready and this four-star team, and here he comes. He's climbing out of the car, and he's got a big smile on his face. Our Chelsea Miller is down trackside. Let's send it down to Chelsea. Down here with your winner, Tim McCready. Tim, you have never won here before. This has got to be unbelievable. I don't think I made the race the last time I came here. So, uh, you know, it's it's tough when it rubbers that early into the race. And uh, I feel bad for the guys that dropped out. I, I, Bobby probably would have been tough to beat. He was leading the whole way. And uh, sometimes you got to have luck on your side. And uh, it was our night tonight to have some luck. Any uh, concern going through your head at any point, noticing a lot of the guys dropping out with tire concerns? Heard you when you pulled in a little bit with your left front here. Any thoughts going through your head about that? Oh, the right front's canvas, but I don't know. I mean, it, if you just slow down when it's that rubbered up, usually it's going to take somebody to run over you to get by you. So uh, I knew Pat would race me as good as you can, and you know, we'll take it. Congratulations. Any sponsors anybody you need to thank? Yeah, of course, this four-star team, uh, Mike Storms, is. You know, he comes and helps me when he doesn't race when I run, and then uh, Vinny and his wife, Colleen, uh, they do a heck of a job with this team. It's it's a potent combination. I love driving it. Awesome job. Thanks. Tim McCready, winner of the Victoria 200. Speaking of storms, did you catch that lightning behind him? If you got a Time Warner DVR, bring it back a little bit. Lightning strike just a couple miles off the backstretch. Yeah, spectacular weather moving in, and we finished this one just in time. Well, I can't believe we beat it here. They rushed it along. Got to give a lot of credit to the folks at Utica Rome Speedway for the job they did. Let's take a look at the unofficial results. Of course, Tim McCready, Pat Ward, they get the win. Vic Coffey ends up in third. Yeah, Michael Storms, nice run for him, finishing fourth. So two of Vinny's cars in the top five. Andy Bichetti, fifth. Sixth, Tim Fuller. Billy Decker rebounds from a flat tire to finish seventh. Jimmy Phelps. You finished eighth. There's Danny Johnson. Remember, he had a late flat. He ends up getting position number 11. Alan Johnson also had a late flat. He ends up in position number 13. And there's last year's winner, Gary Tompkins, in position number 15. Not a bad run for Tompkins coming out of the B main. Mitch Gibbs, Brad Elder, Todd Burley, Brian Weaver in there. And, oh, look at that, Brett Hearn finishing way back in the 28th position. Well, it was a tough day for him. Had to come from the Conce, and Brett Hearn ends up barely, first of all, making the field that ends up as the last car in 28th position. So a tough run for the multi-time Mr. Dirt champion from down in New Jersey. So as Tim McCready celebrates down in victory lane, we'll check in with our second place finisher. Pat Ward is down trackside with our Chelsea Miller. Down here with Pat Ward, your second place finisher. You've had a tough month this year. This has got to be nice for you. Yeah, it was a good run. Uh, I pressured Timmy way too hard the first 50 of that second uh, 100 and uh, no tires left, but he. I knew he was letting off early, saving tires. He was doing the smart thing, and uh, I tried to get by him so I could do the same thing, and he was just way too strong for me. Noticing a lot of guys dropping out, did any concern go through your head about your tires on your car? Well, I generally have bad luck in these long races, so I, I was hearing all sorts of things and uh, just wanted the race to get over and try to get back by Timmy, but I realized I was not going to do that, so I was glad to get a second out of it. Awesome job. Thank you. Down here with Pat Ward, your second place finisher. And keep in mind, he is the defending ROC champion as well. Trouble late in the race for Vic Coffey. Didn't see what happened, but uh, he's getting towed back to the pit area. Yeah, hence why Chelsea wasn't able to get an interview as he's held hostage inside that race car. Tough break for him, but it still comes away with a nice third place finish, so a, a nice chunk of change there for Victor Coffey. Let's take a look and see what happened in this one. We got the green flag, well, several hours ago in the daylight, and we had trouble right out of the box in this one. Yeah, Brad Elger... As they come down into turn number one, he'll get out of shape. Everybody misses him, but we'll have to try it again. And we saw from the in car, wonder if he had some contact there with Danny Johnson. So we were under caution early in this one. 
Stuart Friesen was making his way up through the field here as we were early on the race, but he ran into trouble in turn number three. Yeah, Stuart Friesen again. There he goes, loops it around and slides off the high side of the speedway. That would send him to the pits for the first of three pit times that we know about. And, of course, uh, one guy was making his way through the outside here very early. Yeah, Matt Shepard really working the high side of the speedway. He's going to get a bunch of cars here as he comes off the turn and heads down the back stretch. One, two, three spots. Matt Shepard picked up with that nice move on the outside. But that was before the rubber came down and something else started happening on the racetrack. And that something else was tires and lots of them. Yeah, everybody blowing the right rear tires on these cars. The track took rubber, daytime racing conditions, trying to push the stroll along because of Mother Nature. As a result, laying rubber down, tires go flat. And even with the experienced drivers, you saw Billy Decker. I mean, he's a multi-time champion. Matt Shepard, he's been winning everywhere. He was in the pits. Vic Coffey was in. Didn't matter who you were, the tire bug could bite you at any time. Early on, Bobby Barron looked to be the man to beat. He had no tire troubles. Well, that was until lap number 97. Yeah, just four laps to go in the segment. Varon would head to the pit area and would not be a factor the rest of the way. We heard from Pat, Ward inter Pat Ward's interview. He was pressuring Tim McCready. Here he is doing that on lap 139. Yeah, you see Varon in the shot there, but Varon is not a factor at this point. He's on the tail end of the lead lap. So you can see Ward doing everything he could. Now late in the race, trouble here. Danny Johnson ended up heading to the pit area. He would change two tires on that, end up finishing outside of the top 10, but no problems out, out front for Tim McCready. Yeah, Tim McCready takes it down here on the final lap. Nice and steady the whole second portion of this event, and he'll bring it down to the checkered flag. So $10,000 richer is Tim McCready as Pat Ward came across in position number two, Vic Coffey and Michael Storms. And this has been Timmy's calling card this year. He likes doing this after a win. Yeah, a little burnout here on the front stretch for the fans. And, hey, look at that. We got it done. And now Wow. While we were in the race recap, it began to rain here at Utica Rome Speedway. So what a great job by everybody just to get this into that. I love it when this happens. We talked about Pat Ward and points. He is currently the still, still the point leader with the RLC Tour. Yeah, Danny Johnson right there, Billy Decker, Matt Shepard, and Stuart Friesen are your top five. And, of course, Michael Storms, Lori White, Bobby Barron, Dwayne Howard, and Ronnie Johnson round out the top ten. Two races in to the Dark Dirt Race of Champions Tour for 2010. So everybody's going to head for shelter right now as somehow we got the whole 200 in today. We had a great show. Our next show is going to be Winged Super Modifieds at the Oswego Speedway. We saw them earlier this year in Malta at Albany, Saratoga. We'll check them out again on Wednesday, July 21st. Check your local Time Warner Cable Sports affiliates for air times in your area. For Mike Mallett, Chelsea Miller, I'm Doug Elkins. We'll see you at the racetrack. Hey.